here an image which shows the locations where the 11 trout referenced in the article were caught. When you look at it this broadly, you automatically realize there are misleading aspects of it. For instance, in this particular area right here in the North Badlands, you can't really see all the dots. I went into Google Earth and placed those red marks on the map as close as I could to where the fish were caught. So if you reduce the scale on the map to see it in this manner, you can see much more specifically exactly where the fish were caught. And get back into the nine pound category, 30 inch category. Map of course has more marks on it and again looking at it in this large scale it's somewhat misleading this this jumble of marks down here is not clear at this scale so when you have to zoom in to really see more of the detail related to that and you begin to glean information it's important to think of this in one way these are the raw numbers this is data in raw number form which as the article points out is not particularly useful you would have to overlay these raw numbers with the amount or percentage of time that you fished in each of these various spots in order to really uh, draw a meaningful conclusion about where to fish at a given time I make two basic points about this data. Superficially, it's obvious that drawing re reasonable or meaningful conclusions from the data is difficult. Uh, particularly, the more data you have, the fuzzier it gets because I believe it's really difficult to nail down a percentage of time that you fished at a particular spot. There's a second conclusion, though, that's even more important if you don't have any of this data you have no chance to draw any conclusions whatsoever which is why I've always emphasized over and over again the importance of keeping fishing logs and accumulating data